Throughout the world, motherhood is cherished. In fact, mothers are regarded as symbols of love and a bond that connects various generations. These are the ties that define planet Earth. However, the road to motherhood is laced with dangers. Millions of women risk their lives in their quest to be vessels of nature's quest for preservation and progression. In fact, some have died during childbirth, while others are left with depressing temporary and chronic disorders. One such condition is the obstetric fistula. In sub-Saharan Africa, poverty and lack of sound healthcare systems and policies have seen the region emerge as the worst affected as far as obstetric fistula is concerned. Kenya is not the only country with high cases of obstetric fistula. Many sub-Saharan African countries are not faring any better. Estimates from the World Health Organization state that 130,000 cases of obstetric fistula are reported each year in sub-Saharan Africa. This accounts for 2% of the 6.5 million incidents of obstructed labor that are reported in developing countries across the world. A huge number of these cases go untreated. Women who suffer from fistula often find themselves in a tight spot. The signs and symptoms can be unsightly. It is not just the stench they emit, there are other possible dangers that lie in the involuntary flow of urine and fecal matter. Women with fistula are often an easy target for horrendous stigma. This is not new on the continent. The position of women in some African societies and the patriarchal nature of these communities have made women easy targets for shaming with or without stigma. Many victims are left nursing psychological trauma as a result of these shaming attitudes directed at them. Dr. Weston Kisa, an obstetrical and fistula surgeon, has been conducting surgeries for women experiencing fistula in the region for over 16 years. Thousands of mothers have benefited from his professional assistance. In my career, I have had the privilege of serving over 4,000 women living with fistula. Uh, I must say, this is not the easiest road to travel. But with it comes the fulfillment of putting a smile on the faces of women. The constraints in our society today have made it difficult for women to, with living with fistula to access information uh, on proper medical care. And even when they do, they are still limited by the inefficiencies of our health system. <laughs> Kaitucemero Lakini <laughs> I 
no teva arata ni umroi guche doret baka mobisa egere taj korra no mo ngina gaika kanyore nge kena na nyodo muchando bistura igata mete agateva kuna chande ndo munda nge gitari otobo ati umwana otari guchi gonkonya na ndaza wisbono urwari terusa na kange kange egere baka nyara gonsugulikera baka ngomoyo Singing to Penyane Rusi Moyanga, Mbuyan Que, who work for Romucha and Longa Noyaga. The challenges that they have to deal with on a day to day basis are beyond their control. Often, the issues that follow them can be categorized along the lines of the real fistula itself and the societal perception related issues such as stigma and isolation. The major challenge is unavailability of quality health services. Uh, this problem is deeply rooted in the continent, yet it's almost non-existent in other parts of the world. It points to just how far we are from accepting that uh, basic health is a basic right for every human being, including uh, the women. The kind of tribulations these women go through are unwarranted. It is slow torture that leads many women to depression and societal tendencies. Many of these women just stop living and this is the tragedy of life. As medical personnel, we face a lot of challenges ranging from um, infrastructure, skills, psychosocial issues. And we try to address them in the best way that we can. As healthcare workers who also handle um, mothers who suffer from fistula and uh, stillbirth, we also have the challenge of health education. The community is not well enlightened on what to do when it comes to child and maternal health care. I think this is as a result of lack of education. They have not been taught on what to do, which is something we should practice as a community and as healthcare practitioners. With regards to these challenges that we are faced with as healthcare providers, there are things that can be worked on. Most of them can actually be made possible. If all the stakeholders, authorities involved would come uh, together, issues may be avoided, like the uh, maternal and child deaths that we experience on a daily basis. This affects us mentally, psychologically, and even emotionally. As a people, most affected by this problem we must work harder towards a fistula-free generation by improving access to quality emergency obstetric care as a first step in the fistula prevention and also effective management of obstetric emergencies. And thirdly, immediate care of the obstetric fistula or women who develop obstetric fistula and its treatment. And this is indeed achievable as a country and as a people. I was so worried because I had never suffered from fistula before. So I was afraid that what kind of life will I be living with this condition. I was rejected by my family, my in-laws, and also my friends. Some even started calling me names, which made me feel lonely and I isolated myself. I could not manage to stay, to stay in a group due to the cloth waiting and also the smell. I was feeling embarrassed that when I go to the church or even visit a friend and I want to stand, what stories will I leave behind? I thought I was cursed or even bewitched. And it reached a point that I, f I felt like committing suicide. But my husband was there for me, he stood by me till this point. Many people told him a lot of things. 
they even some even told him that how how can he live with a with a disabled wife but he didn't listen to them he stood with me all along after two years living with this shame I heard about free fistula camp and I visited them I was received well surgery was done to close the fistula and I'm now okay thanks to my husband here for standing by my, my side through all the tribulations I had a lot of difficulties taking care of my wife because nobody told me what to do when fistula develops. I wish the healthcare workers could have told me how to take care of her, more so how to handle stigma and rejection that followed thereafter. My wife was rejected by our family members. The rejection that also affected me so much. My brothers even went ahead and brought me another girl to marry, saying that my wife had been so promiscuous and that is why she had Istula. I was not happy. I got mad on them and just them away. I decided to protect my wife and to love her. Because my wife, she's still the same with or without fistula. We went through a lot of pain and suffering before we had that hospital where the surgery was done. And my wife is now fully healed and well, and we are living happily. My advice to men outside there, when a fistula knocks at your door, don't run away. Don't neglect your wife because of what people say. Believe you me, fistula, like another condition, is treatable. It is not witchcraft. And fight this thing called fistula out of Africa. As more and more women fall victim to obstetric fistula, very few experts like Dr. Kisa are available. And as African societies continue sticking to cultures and religious beliefs like female genital mutilation and arranged marriages, prospects of a lasting solution remain elusive. Focus now shifts to awareness, especially the involvement of men who shape tradition and religion on the continent. African governments can achieve this with sound policies that are backed by proper and focused implementation. So what can we do to prevent fistula to develop? How do we facilitate access to health services to women who have developed fistula? How do we support women who had an unsuccessful surgery or will never access one? Recommendations for women who are suffering fistula. Don't blame yourself about the fistula. You didn't do anything wrong. If you notice a leak of urine, seek immediate support at the main hospital. Get in touch with hospital services to explore treatment options. Ask to be linked to peers and peer support groups to talk about your situation and get support. Don't give up on your businesses and activities. Recommendation for partners. Support your partner's decision around pregnancy and childbirth. Allow her to make choices about where and when to access the hospital to give birth. 
participate in the care of your spouse during pregnancy, at birth, and in the postnatal period. Don't blame your spouse. Try to understand what happened, respect her feelings, and encourage her to express it. Ask questions to healthcare professionals to understand the needs of your spouse during childbirth, postnatally, and after discharge. Recommendations for families, including in-laws. Support the woman during childbirth, allowing her to make decisions. Don't blame the woman if she develops fistula. It can happen to anybody. When fistula develops, ask professionals to explain the care needed and how to assist the woman in the house. Encourage the woman to continue her activities and business. Encourage the woman to participate in church and social events. Do not separate and isolate the woman from her partner. Recommendations for communities. Do not isolate women. A gentle smile and greeting is a sign of inclusion. Link women who have fistula to peers and support groups present in your community. Help women to continue with their small businesses and activities without stigmatizing them. Allow women to participate in social activities and attend church. Involve fistula ambassadors in the community to hear their experiences and help identify women who need help. Raise awareness about this condition so that women who suffer can seek help.